I want to start this off by saying that if you don't like the One Piece anime, that's perfectly fine. You're allowed to enjoy or not enjoy whatever you like. I just want to defend the One Piece anime for a second because I tend to see a lot of criticism about it or just hatred over it. And while I do think that a lot of criticism towards it is deserved, I do feel like there's a bit of blind hatred towards it. But as a disclaimer, I will say that One Piece is my favorite anime, so there may be some bias, but I'll try to look under it as critical of an eye as any other. There is just one thing that I am not going to critique, and that is length. So many people talk about the length of One Piece and how it's gone on for 20 years that I don't really feel the need to talk about it. So, disclaimer, this is a video for One Piece fans by a One Piece fan. Let's start from the beginning, where One Piece started. And for the first few seasons, both manga and anime fans were pretty delighted and happy with how the One Piece anime was going. From Arlong to Alabasta to the Sky Islands, things seemed to be going good. But things changed once they left the Sky Islands. This era of the One Piece anime is most commonly known in the fanbase as the Dark Age of One Piece, which lasted from Long Ring Long Land all the way to Whole Cake Island. If you think that's long, that's about 15 years of anime. So, why is it called the Dark Age exactly? People commonly call that the Dark Age of One Piece because it's usually when they notice that there was a lot of more padding in episodes, as well as a lower quality of animation. I truly felt that in the Long Ring Long Land arc, which is almost about 30 episodes of nothing but filler. And yeah, I know that Foxy is technically canon, but he just sucks as a villain, and nobody likes that part. It actually made me stop watching One Piece for a while, because after going from Sky Island to this, it felt really boring and stagnated. I mean, come on, you go from defeating God and saving a city of angels in the sky to what? Davy back fights and a guy that cheats to win races? That's just not as cool. But this arc is made much worse in the anime, where the number of episodes is doubled from the length of chapters actually made in the manga. And this is where the Dark Age started. But one bad arc doesn't ruin a show, at least most of the time. Because afterwards, we got the Water 7 arc, a really emotional and really good arc. And then the Yeni's Lobby arc, which I was really looking forward to after coming from the Water 7 saga. I realized it was arc, not saga. Rip me, I guess. But then another part of the Dark Age of the anime showed up, and that was the animation itself. While not nearly as bad as a further animation I'll talk about, people noticed a quite a large decline in the animation, with a lot of characters looking off-model. Now, I'm not going to be your typical anime YouTuber that just bashes Toei and makes fun of the animation while using screenshots of background characters or in-between frames. But there were a lot of moments throughout the entire Dark Age of One Piece that just looked off to me. But everyone acts like as soon as it hit Annie's lobby, the entire animation of One Piece just took a nosedive. When that's not really true... The arc immediately after that was the Thriller Bark Saga, and I thought that one looked really spectacular. The characters were fairly on model for the most part, and there was some really good choreography throughout the arc. And that's one thing I'll give it. Everyone says that the anime looks really bad, but there are really good choreography and fight scenes sprinkled in there. Another thing I've heard people bring up is in the Saba Odi Archipelago arc, uh, they say that's another point the animation gets real bad. And yes, while a lot of the characters throughout the arc are off-model and not as detailed, it helps make the characters more expressive and move more fluently, which I noticed particularly in that arc. But now, I think it's time we address the elephant in the room. Or should I say, Flamingo. Now keep in mind that it's not easy being an animator, especially for a big studio like Toei Animation, where you have to produce an episode every week. It must be stressful on the animators, 
And I think that all came ahead into the Dress Rosa arc. If you look at the release schedule of One Piece during that time, you'll also notice that it was during the same time as Dragon Ball Super was being released. And if you're a Dragon Ball fan, you know how bad the first two arcs of Dragon Ball Super were. In terms of animation, both shows were suffering a lot. And I think Toei put most of their resources into fixing the animation of Dragon Ball Super because it was a new show. And by the end of Super's production, it gave us some really stunning animation, while One Piece still kind of chugged along at a really slow rate. And if I have to be honest with you, in terms of animation, I feel like the first half of the Whole Cake Island arc suffered way worse than the Dress Rosa arc did. Now that may be biased because Doflamingo is my favorite villain, and in terms of story, I think Dress Rosa is much better than Whole Cake Island, but I'm much more willing to have a long drawn out fight with the final antagonist of an arc than the first antagonist of an arc, as was done in the Whole Cake Island section where the fight with Luffy and Cracker, which took only two manga chapters, took up eight anime episodes. But then, something magical happened as soon as Luffy started his fight with Katakuri. Toei decided to use their money and resources to help the animators and give them more time and money to actually make the animation good. What came of it is probably my favorite fight in One Piece. Yes, the anime fight with Luffy and Katakuri is my favorite fight in One Piece. And while I can't show it, I'm sure you could look up some AMVs of it online somewhere. That, for me, and for a lot of people, signified the end of the Dark Age of One Piece. And that's where we are now with the Wano Saga. And while a lot of the fan base will disregard the last 10 years of the One Piece anime, I still think there's some really nice gems in there. As I mentioned before, Thriller Bark was a really well-animated arc. The anime adaptation of Impel Down made it my favorite arc in One Piece just because of how fast-paced and fun it is. And hell, I think that the Punk Hazard arc was done really well in the anime too, especially with the reintroduction of Law. And even Dress Rosa had its moments of really great animation, like the whole fourth gear transformation. Or even the fight with between Bartolomeo and Gladius, that was really enjoyable to watch. And you cannot tell me that watching Zoro slice Pika in half was not epic. And while most people will say that the animation doesn't look good most of the time, I'd argue that most of the time it looks average, but it does look really good in the times that it needs to be. And you can't tell me that openings like Hard Knock Days and Superpowers don't slap. So I guess in the end, what I'm trying to say is, don't just pass something off just because someone told you it wasn't good. Because you never know, you might actually find it enjoyable. Anyway, this has been Casey Berger, and I am out.